Hey, it's Cheryl from Home Am I Making. I wanted to hop on today. I was um, going through my stencils. I don't know if you know, but I am an affiliate with a maker studio. So I was looking through my stencils today and I found one that said, bless this mess. And although I would normally use it for the mess in the house, I think I'm gonna use it for bless this mess, the mess that we're going through. So. As you hop on, let me know you're here and I'll show you a cute little fun craft I'm gonna do with this stencil. Let me get you on my computer. As you hop on, let me know you're here. Let me take a drink before I choke. So what I did is I wanted to make a sign that used the Bless This Mess stencil from a maker's studio. So these stencils are mesh stencils and they come in packs like this. This is about a, let me get my glasses on so I can see who's coming on here. Hello, Jan. Hello, Sylvia. How are you? So what I was saying, guys, is um, I was going through my stencil stash and I came upon this, bless this mess, stencil. Um, and in theory, I would use that for the mess that's in the house, but I think I'm just gonna use this as a sign for bless this mess that we have going on. So I am an affiliate with a Maker Studio. So these are a Maker Studio brand stencils. They are a mesh stencil that has a, it's like a silk screen because these stencils don't go all the way through. So they give more detail. So I'm gonna use this one today. It's bless this mess and I'll show you what I'm making. So today I um, was also looking at what I had and I happened to have this gray burlap, which is kind of fun. It's not your traditional color. So I have a lot of gray in my house, my office. So I said, let me start there. So I did cut out a little piece that would coordinate with the size of this stencil. And I did tear some of the little strings off. So let me go ahead and show you about how wide I'm making it so you can get a feel for it. So this is like eight by 12 that I cut it out. And then I did, um fray a little bit of the edges. So what I want to make is I want to make a little banner. But the first thing I'm going to do is I also had this, I guess it's like, um, I want to say it's linen, maybe it's muslin fabric. Hey, Joni, how are you? Is your work week over? Um, so I did cut a little um, piece of that out the size of the stencil and then in a square and then what I'm going to do on here also is just pull some of the strings off so that um, it kind of camouflages the cut line kind of makes it a little rustic but it also camouflages the cut, cut line since I don't sew anything I mean if you could sew and you wanted to seam it and you didn't want it to be all um, kind of organic for lack of a better word then you could do that too here let me go ahead and get rid of that and i'll show you what i'm going to start with so i have my piece of gray muslin which i think again is a fabulous color and um, then i have another piece of uh i mean gray burlap and then the white muslin that is going to be able to coordinate with this. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take my stencil, which is the Bless This Mess stencil, and I'm going to stencil on this piece of muslin. Um, what I'm going to use for this also is a Maker Studio has a line of uh, gel art ink and it was formulated for material but you can use it on uh, paper and wood and everything but this is called blowing up a storm and normally what we do is to apply it you use like a little scraper so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to try to somehow line this up and then I'm going to take this and like just try to burnish it so that I don't have any seepage with the, um, you know what, I guess I could use this. That's a good idea. But however, you, when you use a stencil, you have to press it down so that you don't have that much bleed. 
So there you go. And I'm going to use this color called Hey Jan, hey Sylvia, hey Joni, hey Lisa. Lisa, Lisa, you're sprinkling already. Thank you very much. Um, so this is this is called Blowing Up a Storm. So it's kind of a lighter gray than this. So I show you how to use this. So I'm going to spread some of this onto this or squirt some of this onto the spreader. And then I'm going to use it by just pushing it through this stencil, just being sure I don't get it on the fabric on the outside of the stencil. So this is a quick and easy way. Again, I don't have a Cricut, so I can't do any kind of, um, you know, words other than stencils. And I do like the way this um, gel art ink works on fabric. Now, if you wanted to use it permanently on fabric, since this sign doesn't go in the washing machine or anything, I don't need to heat set it. But if you were to use this product on, say, a dish towel or clothes, you would heat set it, which just means taking about a 220 iron for a few minutes with the cloth on top of it to heat set it before you were to throw it in the wash. But again, since this isn't going to go in the wash because it's a sign, I don't really have to heat set it. I do have to let it dry, but I don't have to heat set it. Hey, Kathy, how are you? Everybody having a good day today? Or what we know is good in this day and time? Make sure you put everything in perspective. So what you do when you do use a stencil like this, because it does have holes in it, you do want to remove it and then automatically put it into a water bath or if you had a sink nearby. I do have a, a tub of water here because I don't have a sink here. So that'll just stop the um, uh, gel or ink from messing up the screen. So, because if, if the gel art ink stays in the screen, then you won't be able to use the stencil because those stencils can last for like 30, 35 times. So this is what it's going to look like. But for the sake of time, because I can't use this one wet to do what I did, um, I already went ahead and did one and let it dry. So this one's dry. So as I touch it for my product, for my project, it's not going to um, mess up my uh, uh, fabric or my burlap. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to approximately place that there. Can you use regular craft paints on those stencils? You know, I never have. So I don't know the answer to that. Um, I probably would have to say I don't see why not. It's just that, you know, how things are formulated to use with whatever. So I don't, cause I'm a, an affiliate with them. I don't really use different paints for that. I use different paints for different stuff. I hope that answered your question, Joni. So what I'm going to do is, weirdly enough, when I was cleaning out my closets too, I found these um, little tassels and I got them at Joann's last year. Usually when stuff goes 80% off and I'm in those stores, I just, and I see stuff, I just throw it in my cart if it's like 50 cents. So they had these uh, tassels. There was like three of them for 50 cents and they're kind of like a weird color. I mean, nondescript, but I decided that I was going to use it on this project. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a dowel and I'm going to remove this for a second because I'm going to need to know where my placement is. And I'm going to put the um, gray burlap on here like this. And I am going to hot glue it on. So let me go ahead and get that onto this dowel. Trying to center it where I think it's even on both sides. And trying not to burn myself at the same time because the muslin's got holes in it. Have you guys noticed I stopped using my Ryobi glue gun? because it is too hot for me. I was literally um, burning my fingers off and that was just not good. Okay, let me just get it so that it... Let me just put one more thing of glue so that it doesn't unroll on me. If you do 
you guys hear a noise, my husband's mowing the lawn. Excuse that noise if you hear it. Okay, so that's what I got so far. I got it um, glued onto the dowel. Again, remember, this is an inspiration, so do whatever you have with whatever you have at home. Norma, South Florida. I'm also from Florida. I'm not in Florida right now, but I lived there for 40 something years on the West Coast. Okay, so that's what I have now. Then I'm going to take my stenciled piece of fabric and again, try to position that in the center. If you guys can't see what I'm doing, don't forget to swipe those uh, words away. I'm just making sure this is straight. If that's not straight, nothing will be straight. Yeah, let me just try to glue that a little bit more. So yeah, if those words are in the way, just swipe. I think it's to the right so that um, you could have a whole screen of seeing me what I'm doing. Okay, so that's good. And then I'm going to place this kind of about right there. And then I'm also going to glue this. I'm not going to glue a lot of it because it's not that heavy. I can glue just the corners. Like I say, sometimes the glue will make a thick mark because of it being, um, when it dries, it gets chunky, clunky. So there you go. That's what I have so far. Then I decided, so this is what I was thinking. These little pom-pom thingies, and you can make your own. They're very easy to make. These look like they're made out of like thread. So I thought I would hang like one here and one here. And then before I do that, I figured let me use some um, jute to hold up the banner is what I got here already and I did add some beads to it so what I did is I took some beads on this side and I took some beads on this side and I still got to add a couple more on that side to even it out hello Michelle how are you how's everybody's Friday night let me see if I can get these through here these beads are kind of small so the whole opening doesn't always let me get it through if I tape it. Let me see if I take the tape off, if it'll work. I wish these beads were more consistent, but they never are. The holes are always different sizes. I just put an order in for a bunch more beads. Did you guys see my, um, uh, what's it called, Casa beads that I was making? with the um, dyed technique. I didn't show you that, but I showed you the finished project and where I hung it in my house. Did you guys catch that? Thanks, Carolyn. It's, you're sprinkling it already. If you guys are hopping on and you haven't joined my page, please go ahead and like it and follow it. That's that little thumbs up up in the top that looks like a blue thumbs up. That'll allow you to see when I do things. And if you want to be alerted when I go live, you can also um, hit on the notification box underneath all those words. Just need two more and then they're even. So this is a quick little sign I was doing because I was going through my um, a Maker Studio stencils. And when I seen the um, Bless This Mess stencil, I definitely thought, hmm, blessing this mess, maybe not the mess in the house, but the mess in the world. So I figured that would be a good thing to have hanging up right now. After I, this um, twine is from the Dollar Tree, so if you notice, it's always different um, thicknesses and thinnesses, but for a dollar, you can't go wrong. It, you you work you wonder what makes different twines some twines better than each been better than others and it's like why twine should be twine but it's not but I'll still buy it at the dollar store so there you go I did even them out on both sides 
going to push that down. And um, so what I'm going to do to incorporate this little tassel here is I am going to hang this string with the beads, but I'm going to also incorporate this tassel in it at the same time. These ones came with a little hanger on it, so um, thank you, Paula, for sprinkling already. Sprinkling the video, love. Thank you. Well, since I know it is Friday now, better, right? Yep, because the weekend's here. I am a non-essential. I guess every day's a weekend now. But I'm utilizing the time and appreciating it because I don't know if I'll ever get 30 days off again, voluntarily or involuntarily. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hang that and I'm going to just tie a little knot. If you guys have been um, watching my feed, I still haven't figured out what to do with this picture that I found on the top of this catalog. I'm still loving it, but I feel so much pressure because there, there's only one, and I'm like, what am I gonna do with it that I don't, you know, if I don't like how it turns out, what am I gonna do instead? I only have one picture. So I still have my mind working on that um, project. So that's what I have so far. Now I gotta attach it to the other end. What do you think? Show me some love for this. Hit that heart thing. Hearts. Just trying to use up what I have in my house. Um, I do have a lot of stuff in my house. Don't let me fool you. Um, but I can't get to the store if I want anything. I did just put in an Amazon order for some fabric and some, uh, thank you for the hearts, for some fabric and some uh, beads. So I'll be getting happy mail. But it is kind of nice to not go out really and spend money and, um, cause I do have enough craft supplies. Shh, don't tell anybody I said that. Okay, so there's, that's what I got so far. Let me show you. Probably need to glue that knot just so that it doesn't unwind. And then I'll show you where I'm at so far. So, that's what I got. What do you think? Cute and simple. These add a little something something again. You could, um, make your own, this thing's sticking to me, you um, make your own um, tassels and hang them. I happened to, like I said, get these at Joann's last year on sale, really, really cheap. Or you could even hang beads down here, maybe bigger beads to complement the smaller beads in the um, hanger. Then what I decided to do, thank you, Carolyn, I'm gonna take a piece of muslin that I cut and I decided I was going to make a um, flower. And I'm not good at making flowers. I make felt flowers, but I'm not good at making any other kind of flowers. So I'm going to fold it in half and just tie this end in a knot. And I'm just going to make a simple rolled flower. So what you do is just tie this end in a knot, which will weirdly become the center of your flower. Let me try to get it tight. It's hard to tie muslin. So, so what I'm going to do is you start with a knot. Just try to tighten it as much as you can. That will be the center of your flower. Then all you do, this is in a half like that, the longer the piece you use and the wider the piece, the bigger the flower will be. So what you do is you just start to twirl this like that after you made a knot. Now, you, now I could have done this with the muslin also. I mean, uh, the, uh, yeah, the muslin. This is the burlap. I could have done it with that. You could do it with any kind of um, fabric. So that's what I'm going to do. And then this is going to be the center of your flower. So what you're going to do is just take it and start to roll this around that flower, keeping it twisted. And then as you go, just give it a little piece of um, glue so that you can 
attach it and keep that pretty taut, the, um, the rolling part. If it unravels when you do it, just twist it back up. Because you kind of need four hands to do this, but since I only have two. So here we go. Thank you, Kathy. So here's getting there, getting to the end. And then the very last piece, actually, let me do it this way. Just glue the end to the back if it's raggedy. The back being the side that you want on the bottom. You'll know which side's up. You'll see it one side will look better than the other. And then just push that down. And then you have a quick little um, flower embellishment. And like I said, you can do this on anything. And um, you'll always have like a little embellishment that you can do. So there you go. So what I thought I would do is put that like right here. Can you see that? Just stick it down at the bottom. I could do it there or I could do it here, but I think I'm gonna do it down here. And since this stuff has so many little um, strings, I went ahead and took some off of here like this. And then what I did is I piled them in a pile, cut them to the, a certain length like that and then I piled them in a pile like this let's see let me see if I can show you better let me get some more and I'll show you exactly what I do so just rip them off of especially your excess pieces like this is like a piece I already had cut out so just take some of that string because I'm going to use that as part of the embellishment also and then make them all kind of the same length. Let me see if I can do that and I'll show it to you in a second. So you have your strings. Make them, let me show you, let me move this out of the way. So what I did is I took all these little pieces and I'm going to kind of like separate them like this. Can you guys see that? Thank you, Michelle. So I'm going to fan them out like all different ways like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the material again and just make a round cut out. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's going to be what the flower is going to sit on. So just take a round and then I'm going to place these on top of that. So this is what I have so far. And then, let me get some more. I'm gonna take some hot glue, and this is the front, this is the back. I'm gonna hot glue this, put a glob of it on there like that. And then I'm just gonna stick it onto this piece of burlap. And there you go. Then you have a little felt flower. You could start to trim these a little bit. So you didn't waste nothing. And that just makes a cute little embellishment. Again, think of jeans, think of fabric, uh, burlap, muslin. You can make a lot of them. So here I had a few of them made. So that's what I want to add to the um, project. Again, this is an inspiration piece. You can do anything you want. So I'm gonna take one of my flowers and I'm just going to place it probably right there. But again, I'm just gonna glue the bottom, 
make sure he's on there and just place him on there. So let me get him on there. So that's what I have. So what do you think? It's a little stencil with some burlap and gray, some muslin and white, some little um, tassels that I had gotten from Joann's, and a jute string with some beads. So there you go, list this mess. And in this case, we have to define mess, what mess we're blessing. But there you go, I thought I'd come on and show you and give you a little bit of an inspiration piece. Again, you can do it with fabric, paper, muslin, burlap. You could even take a piece of cardboard as your base and cover it with fabric or do whatever. Make it conducive to what we have available right now. So that's my little inspiration piece for tonight. Um, for those of you who haven't already liked and followed my page, please go ahead and do so. I would really appreciate it. And also, if you want notifications for when I go live, just hit that notification button down there and it'll give you a ding when I go live. Um, I wanted to remind you guys that I have a giveaway going on. If you sprinkle Wednesday's tutorial, which was on the bunny on the wood uh, board, if you spread it from that video and you tell me you spread it, I will enter you into the giveaway, which is for a felt banner that I made and a choice of two different ones. I made one in teal and I made one in pink colors. So if you do that, that's still going on. That'll be going on till Sunday. And another thing, if you want to be invited to the, well, not if you want to be invited, I am inviting you to join me at Creating with Cheryl. It's another Facebook page I have so we can share our projects that we make together like if you attempted to make this or you had a better idea than I had or you want to show me something to do that's where we're going to showcase it over there so that's creating with Cheryl and you spell Cheryl c-h-e-r-y-l so if you hop on over to that Facebook account I'll let you into that group and it's a private group where we just have a lot of fun and um talk about the projects that we're done we've done or how we've been inspiring each other so that that's another little community going on over there so again if you're on here and you like what you see give me some hearts thank you and um i'll be back tomorrow with another little craft i still i still have to figure out what i'm going to do with this um because i only have one i don't want to make a mistake not not make a mistake i don't want to have like um regret which is kind of stinky because there's the fear coming in it but you know what I went through this book and they have like a, a lot of nice graphics in here that um I might do more stuff with they have this whole page of graphics which is their t-shirts that they make but each one of those to me is like another piece of project that I can make besides the big one that's on here so this is a cute little catalog I ordered something for my daughter um and then now I get the catalog. Actually, she gets it. It's in her name. I liked this one. I think I definitely have to do something with that graphic, too. So it's pretty. It's paper. So probably be modge podged on something. So I want to thank you for watching me. And you guys have a great rest of your Friday night. And hopefully a peaceful weekend. Thank you for joining me. Bye-bye.